All right, look, the Clippers, they've been stealing all of my focus this week. So, of course, we got to kick off the show talking about them. <laughs> it was a big trade involving James Harden, who previously played for the Philadelphia 76ers. He was traded to the Clippers for Marcus Morris, Nicholas Batum, Robert Covington, KJ Martin's two second round picks, two first round picks. In other words, he was traded to the Clippers for some scrubs, chump change, pocket change, lint, whatever you want to call it. Man, it was not worth it on the 76ers part. They pretty much got robbed in this deal right here. Like gun to head, got beat down, stomped out in a pair of Timberlands, all of that. However you want to phrase it, they got robbed. The Clippers finesse these guys easily. And for James Harden, this is his fourth team since 2019. So I'm hoping that the man can finally be happy on a stacked team like the Los Angeles Clippers with Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook. It does not make sense that he has to go to a team like this to finally somewhat be happy and to potentially get a ring when he was just there with former MVP Joel Embiid. But anyway, that's all besides the point. The thing that kind of sparks my, my, my motors here is that People get so caught up in all the big names. I know the Clippers have Kawhi and, and, and all these other big names on there, but it's a lot of all bark and no bite from what I'm seeing here. Y'all get hyped off of these names and forget to even watch what the person can do when pr in present time. Because, yeah, we, we get they got uh, all these stars. They got four all-stars on their team. But we thought the same thing when the Suns first got Kevin Durant. When they got Kevin Durant and Devin Booker over there, we thought, oh, yeah, the Suns was going to really make some noise. They're going to win a championship. We hear it every time. Even Damian Lillard and Giannis Antetokounmpo. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that they probably will win a championship. But, damn it, we still got to watch the game. You can't just assume because they have such big names that, oh, yeah, these guys are automatically going to win and you don't have to watch it. That's where the thing goes wrong. Because truth is, from Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Russell Westbrook, and James Harden, they're all good. But they've been inconsistent in these past few years, especially come playoffs, because they have not been able to be healthy. We get these guys can score. We get they can make tough shots. But that is so much more than basketball, because what good is anybody to a team if they're not healthy enough to actually compete and help out the team to play together? I can count on both hands how many games Kawhi Leonard, Paul George and Russell Westbrook have played together. And I promise you, it's not more than five. So really, I can count it on one hand, truth be told. Like, Clippers, they disturbed me because they've had the best team on paper and never accomplished anything. So I cannot allow myself to get caught up in a hype of, oh, now they got James Harden in addition to Kawhi, Paul George, and Russell Westbrook, when they never did anything from the jump. They've had the best team on paper since 2019, and they've done nothing worth celebrating. In 2019, when they first got Kawhi Leonard and Paul George on the same team together, they did nothing. They went to the playoffs and got the boot in the second round. Then the year after that, they saw the Western Conference Finals, but still lost to a team that they were better than in the Phoenix Suns. Okay, fast forward. They add Russell Westbrook to that team. None of the big three play together between Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, and, and Russell Westbrook. They do not play together. They're still a stacked roster, but they saw nothing but a first-round exit, even after getting Russell Westbrook. So now they get James Harden, <laughs> and this is supposed to be the icing on the cake, right? After you've already had three superstars play together on the same team, you add a fourth guy, and this is supposed to be the icing on the cake that gets you over the hump. I don't believe it. Because the issue has never been the talent. The issue has been health and these guys actually playing together in the playoffs. But that we don't see it. We don't see it. I know it's beautiful you add James Harden to that team. It gives you so many different things to scheme from. James Harden's opened up the floor inside, outside. He can play the two guard, what he's actually used to doing if he wants to now. They can, man, they can transition so many different things to help this offense and make that so much more versatile on the offensive end and on the defensive end. I wouldn't count James Harden as no defensive player, but on the offensive end, you can damn sure mix some things up if you're playing against a good defensive team. But injuries have been a key reason why they've been coming up short. And I can't believe or I can't stop to think that all of a sudden that's not going to be a factor anymore. So Clippers at full strength is scary, but it's been four years and we're yet to see them do anything. So I'm, I'm not jumping on the bandwagon just yet. The thing I'm probably most impressed about with the Clippers front office is that um, they really finessed the, the 76ers. <laughs> That's probably the thing that, that really has me most bamboozled. I'm impressed by the front office that they were able to fit these contracts on there. 
um, adding four all stars on the same team and then keeping all the other talent that they have there. They still got Norman Powell. They still got uh, uh, Terrence Mann. They still got so many other people. Zubak is on that team. So not only did they give away scraps, but they also still have a pretty solid bench as well. And that's what I'm really impressed about. As far as the 76ers, they can just consider this done. They can consider the process over. I don't know why Philly front office is doing Joel and B like this. This man has been patient, but they put him in the same situation that they had him in a few years ago when Ben Simmons was first trying to get traded out of there. Joel and B now needs another superstar to play with him, and it's not his fault. He's done nothing but do he's done nothing wrong by any superstar he's played with. Every guy he's played with, he's done great. He's done his part. He's balled out, and he allowed them to transition into the team with no shade, none of that type of stuff. But all of a sudden, the front office, again, man, Philadelphia, they're looking very rough in that front office. They gave away James Harden for scraps, and now they're going to try and flip these draft picks as if that's going to bring another superstar to Joel Embiid. No, I'm not going for that. And if I'm Joel Embiid, I give it about one or two years before he actually requests a trade because... I wouldn't be able to put up with this front office that they have going on. I'm sure Joel Embiid is sick of it, and I'm sure he's going to want out within the next one or two years. But look, man, you know, it, it definitely could be worse for the organization. They could still have Doc Rivers. <laughs> the 76 could still have Doc Rivers, who is a bad coach. Um, and also, too, they could be the Chicago Bulls. 